Hey guys, a lot of you fiberglass RV owners have asked about getting ceramic nano shield coatings on your RVs. I'm happy to report that this is now available. So if you want to have your fiberglass RV protected by the industry's best ceramic glass coating, talk to Vinny or Brian, book an appointment, and yes, you can tell them I sent you. Campfire question. Chihuahua edition. Hey guys, we are Sean and Christy. This week we've got a great campfire question from Dave Pillow, who writes, I appreciate your help and advice on your videos. I watch a lot of videos on the RV life. We are newbies. There's a subject that I haven't seen or heard about yet on any other videos. It concerns full hookup RV campsites. Do you ever use the showers at these places? Well, Dave, <laughs> that is a trick question <laughs> because to answer your question directly, if we're at a full hookup campground, we're typically using the shower inside our RV. Yeah. We like our shower, and if we're at a full hookup campground, that means we have water, sewer, and electrical hookups. Sewer being the most important there because we can empty our gray tank if necessary, if it gets full from showering. And showering does consume more of your fresh water than probably any other use. I would say the one time we do use the showers at a full hookup campground is if we're somewhere and they have a really, really nice bathhouse and we want to just go in and take a really long, hot shower, you know, longer than we would be able to take in our RV. For instance, the one campground I can remember that we do this at is Yellowstone's Edge, which is about 40 minutes north of the northern entrance to Yellowstone. They have a really nice bathhouse that's really clean and usually empty, and so sometimes I will go in there and take a nice long hot shower. You know, the other time I can think of using the bathhouse in a full hookup campground was at Fort Wilderness. Now, Fort Wilderness does have unusually nice bathhouses, but the reason we were using them is because we drove down to Disney World and somehow our sewer hose jumped off our rig. Like we lost our sewer hose in transit uh, on the way to Disney World. So we showed up at Fort Wilderness and we had no sewer hose. And many years ago, someone at Airstream had the brilliant idea of having proprietary sewer hose connections. It's some sort of special Thetford connection. And so they're almost impossible to find. So we had no way to empty our tanks at Fort Wilderness. So that forced us to go to the bathhouse there, which turned out to be a really nice bathhouse. We do occasionally use the bathhouse, but not if it's at a full hookup campground in most cases. However, when we camp in national parks and they have a bathhouse, we will use those usually just to conserve our water on board our camper, just because most of those campgrounds are not full hookup. I can think of specifically Grant Village in Yellowstone. They actually have a nice bathhouse there, and it's included in your campground stay. Dave's question is a really great one because it gets to the heart of an important issue when you're RV traveling. What about those times when you're showering outside of your RV in order to conserve water? You know, many national parks may be no hookup campgrounds. So what do you do to conserve the water in your RV and yet still shower? And you know, my personal policy is to shower once a week whether I need it or not. In this video, we're actually going to give you some pretty cool tips and hacks that will improve your showering experience if you have to go to a bathhouse. And we're also going to talk about other places where you might take a shower outside of your RV. We're not going to be too scandalous here. But. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't have a lot of footage inside of bathhouse showers because every time I walk into the women's shower with a camcorder, yeah. people freak out. I don't get it. And, you know, they'll scream. Uh, sometimes they'll shove me outside. So far, my efforts to get inside the women's showers with my camera and take a look around have been unsuccessful. They keep on locking the door and they have threatened to call security, but I'll keep trying. So first off, if you think about going to the bathhouse, there's some schlepping involved. Yes. And I have taken a firm stance 
against schlepping on this channel because I already have so much to schlep. Yeah. Right now I'm schlepping a three and a half pound chihuahua, for example. I don't mind schlepping her. But you're Who's trying to... to sleep at the moment? She's like, why are you moving me around? But you're going to have to schlep your stuff over to the bathhouse. Yes. So we actually carry a few items specifically meant for use in bathhouses. Typically, we just each carry a tote bag of some sort to have our stuff in it. But within our tote bag, we carry some other items that are very helpful. First and foremost. <laughs> this is a travel size container in which you could put shampoo or liquid soap. Yeah, so it's just a little silicone container. So I like that because you can squeeze every last bit out of it. It's not slippery, you know, it's kind of grippy, so you're not gonna drop it. And so we have a set of these each that we use. Personally, I like bar soap. And so we will carry a travel bar soap container. Yeah. And we usually drop these inside a large Ziploc bag. Yep. It just keeps all of that wet mess in one space. The other thing that we typically do, or I typically do, he doesn't usually do this, but I bring a little shower poof with me and I put this in my Ziploc bag too. Because that way I don't have to worry about having a washcloth. I can just soap this up and scrub down with this and then rinse it clean and stuff it back in my Ziploc bag. So it's just a nice little alternative to carrying a wet washcloth. I pass on the poof. <laughs> now here's a pro tip. If you're in a bathhouse, this yes, does this come. This is a major <laughs> hack. This does come courtesy of our little Chihuahua. These are puppy training pads. Our dog is quite fond of these because it, for her, it serves as a portable bathroom. Yes. <laughs> for you, this will serve as a disposable bath mat. Yes. So they're very Perfect. absorbent. They're inexpensive. You can buy big packs of them for not a lot of money. So it's great for when you step out of the shower. Usually in most of these places, you're going to be able to step out of the shower into a little like changing area that's usually behind a curtain or door or something, if you're lucky. And this is a great place to put this because you can put it down and you can step out of your shower shoes that you should be wearing. That way you've got a dry place to put your feet that's clean. It's not a towel that you're gonna have to bring back to your camper and find a place to put it because it's gonna be gross from laying on the bathroom floor. So this is perfect because you can just put it down, use it while you're changing your clothes, drying off and everything, and then when you're done, you just wad it up and throw it in the trash. And by the way, we do carry flip-flops. Uh, we've talked in the past about Crocs flip-flops. They're great, except they can be slippery <laughs> when they get wet. Yes. So I do like these Alokai flip-flops uh, because they're pretty nice looking. If you're ever going to go out on a formal flip-flop night, they're a good choice. <laughs> but they're pretty grippy on the bottom even when they get wet. And sometimes in some showers, you just feel a little better wearing some flip-flops. Yeah, I would definitely recommend that you always wear shower shoes of some sort. I also carry around these aqua socks. These are super cheap and they're useful if you're gonna go boating or kayaking or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But in a pinch, I might wear these in a shower. Yeah, because the one thing about the Olakai, because those are leather, they're not gonna dry quickly. So I just wear some good old fashioned rubber flip-flops no big deal, 10 bucks, you know, wear them all the time. Something that I always try to do as well is br just bring a couple of disposable like little trash bags. This is what I put my dirty clothes in so that I can keep them, you know, separate from everything else in my little tote bag. So that way I don't have dirty clothes just mixing in with whatever else is in my tote bag. So I always bring one of these. Usually I bring two because I usually don't wear my shower flip-flops out of the bathhouse. So I have another one of these bags that I just throw my shower flip-flops in to keep them away from everything else because they're usually wet. Something else that I bring, if you're a girl, I bring one of these little Turby Twist uh, towels for my hair. So, you know, I put this on, you do this. You put your hair up in it, you twist it, and it, it has a little, a little thing in the back that holds it in place. It's a nice look. I don't know if you can see that back there. But that way it stays on your head and you don't have to worry about your towel falling off while you're walking back to your camper. It's super absorbent. It's like a microfiber uh, material, so it's just super convenient and small. Folds up, doesn't take up much space. And speaking of 
microfiber towels. We do carry a couple of really thin, lightweight microfiber towels that are really intended to be camping towels. Mm -hmm. And they're very absorbent. They're not really plush because they're so thin. Mm -hmm. But again, it's less bulk to schlep back and forth to the bathhouse. Yeah. yeah, and they dry super quick. They pack down really small, so they're not going to take up a lot of room in your tote bag going to the shower. They have a little hook on them so you can hang them up you know, while you're in the shower on a hook or something. And then when you're done with it, again, it folds down really super small, and it would be super easy to put into a little grocery bag after it's wet to contain it. But again, they are super absorbent, and you don't really need a very big one to dry yourself completely off. Yeah, and just like the aqua socks, those come in handy on any kind of water sport type of days if you're going to go out on a boat or kayaking or to the beach or a lake. It's just nice to have those around. Specifically because until you need them, they're packed down really super compact. So they don't take up a lot of space like a big fluffy towel would. So let's talk about what you might do if you're in a campground that has no bathhouse. There are no showers and you don't want to shower inside your RV. Well, you have some other options out there. One of our favorite options over the years has been to join a health club. And we've done this with a couple of different health clubs. You can get nationwide gym memberships. And I'll just rattle off a few names. For example, Anytime Fitness. Anytime Fitness are 24-7 gyms, and typically they will have shower facilities. Mm -hmm. And so you could roll into a town and stop at Anytime Fitness. You could work out if you want to get on a treadmill and burn off some beer fat. (laughs) And then you can take a nice, long, hot shower Mm -hmm. and not consume any water in your RV. This was an issue last year during COVID because so many gyms closed their shower facilities. But by this year, I think pretty much everybody's showers are back open. Yeah, we're currently members of Orange Theory Fitness, and we've really enjoyed that membership. But with Orange Theory Fitness, you're on a schedule. You have to schedule classes, Mm -hmm. and they are not open 24-7 by any means. So you have to kind of orient your schedule Mm -hmm. around those gym locations and their schedule. Whereas with some of these other gyms, frankly, they're open 24-7 nationwide. They have shower facilities. Mm -hmm. Or if they're not open 24-7, they're open from like 5 a.m. in the morning till 10 or 11 p.m. at night. So you've got a pretty wide window of opportunity to go in and use the shower. And I'm thinking specifically of Planet Fitness. That's a pretty cheap gym to join. It's like 23 bucks a month, I think, for like a nationwide membership. I don't think you have to sign a contract, so you could just do it for you know, three or four months in the summer while you're traveling or whatever. And, you know, they have full, you know, locker room facilities there. The one thing you need to remember with these gyms, a lot of them are adults only, or at least you have to be 16 or over to go to the gym. So if you have small kids, it may not be an option for you, but you might look into something like YMCA or something like that. I know that sometimes you can go to other locations of YMCA, but I think they do limit you in the number of times you can go to a studio that isn't your home location. So just look into the fine print of that. Ask a lot of questions before you sign up for something. Yeah, and a couple (laughs) of points to make about those nationwide gym memberships. First of all, some of them can be a lot cheaper than you would ever guess. I mean, for example, some of them you could have a nationwide membership, I believe, for as low as $22, $25 a month. Planet Fitness is, I think. And they have more than 2,000 locations Mm -hmm. around the country. So you could be stopping and taking a shower every day, in theory, traveling around the country. The other point about the memberships, you can sometimes negotiate short-term memberships with some of these gyms. We did that a few years ago. Instead of signing up for 12 months... With uh, Anytime Fitness, we did a four-month block. And we just paid it up front and negotiated it with like our local location. And... We could use it anywhere in the country for those four months. Yeah, we actually went to our local gym and we said, we will never use your gym even once. So, like, there's going to be no wear and tear on your equipment. You know, we're not going to be showering here, but we need the nationwide membership. We just don't want to sign a long-term deal. We want to sign one for the next three or four months. And they agreed. And so that worked out really well for us and for them. 
Yeah, and it's great, too, because you can go in and get a workout in. You know, if you've been on the road all day and you just want to walk on a treadmill for 30 minutes just to get some movement going or you want to lift a few weights, you know, you can totally do that. Or even take a class at some of these locations. So, you know, it's it's definitely worth it, I think, to look into if you have any interest in working out. But, of course, also for the shower aspect. <laughs> now, another option for showering outside of your RV would be truck stops. A lot of truck stops have shower facilities. And I believe the showers can cost anywhere from as low as $5 up to $12 or so. And a lot of RV travelers do use truck stop showers. We have not done that ourselves. Yeah. You know, I understand that some of the truck stops really pride themselves on having nice, clean shower facilities mm-hmm. because that's an important service for truck drivers around the country. So another option that you can look into if you're in an area that's highly trafficked by tourists is a community center. A lot of times community centers, if they're in an area where a lot of people are backpacking or camping or hiking, will have a community center that will let you join for a day or buy a day pass where you can go in and use the shower facilities there. I'm specifically thinking of the one in Jackson Hole, the Teton County Community Center right there in Jackson. You can go in and pay, I think it's $7 a day to use their facilities, which means that you can swim in their pool if you wanted to, but you can also use their shower facilities, which are actually really nice. Some campgrounds will sell showers even if you aren't staying there. So, you know, if you needed to get a shower and, you know, you weren't staying somewhere that had showers, sometimes you can call and ask, you know, how much do you charge for a shower? You definitely can do that in most national parks. If they have a campground with a shower, you can just go in and pay to use the shower. Worst case, you can just strip naked and spray down your body with dry shampoo. Well, two other items that you might consider putting in your tote bag. These little packing cubes are great to put your change of clothes in because there is a little handle that you can hang them up with and that way you don't have to worry about having loose articles of clothing falling out of your tote bag and potentially landing on a gross bathroom floor. So I usually try to put things in there. The other thing you can do if you're going to be somewhere where you don't change behind a curtain, which is... I don't like those facilities, but sometimes it happens if you're in like a locker room or something, is a little um, towel that has like a Velcro closure on it. So that way you've got a towel that's, you know, kind of covering you so you can like get dressed underneath it and not just be completely exposed to the world. So those are helpful to have. And, you know, you can use those in your camper, too. Thank you, Dave Pillow, for the great question. More than you ever thought you could know about showering outside your RV. It's really important to consider these things because it can help you conserve your water as you're traveling around the country with an RV. So if you're going to be a full-timer or even a long-term RV traveler, if you're going out on a one or two month journey, you can really think this through and it'll really make your journey go much more smoothly. Sorry guys, this has been yet another episode of Long Long Honeymoon, the long longest running RV video channel on the interwebs. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family. Leave us a comment below. What do you do when you go use a shower house at a campground or other facility? Do you have any hacks that you know we need to know about? Share it down below in the comments. We'd love to hear what you guys do. Also, if you have any other ideas for places where people can shower, we've talked about gymnasiums, we've talked about community centers, we've talked about YMCA's and so forth. Talk about truck stops. Where do you go to shower? Personal question, but an important one. (laughs) If you haven't yet, please click the subscribe button down below. We'd love to have you be part of Loloho Nation. And until next time, what do we say? Loloho. Loloho. And by the way, guys, tune in on Tuesday when we will be live streaming on Amazon Live discussing weird tools. So we're going to have a long list of weird tools that we own and use that I think you'll find interesting and useful. It's going to be a fun live stream Tuesday, 6 p.m. Central Time on Amazon Live. She actually annexed that hat. Yeah. I bought that hat in Alaska. Yeah, you did. In Skagway, Alaska. And... um, Christy liked it so much, she annexed it, and it yes. became Christy's Tilly hat. But I think it looks better on her than it does on me. So. And to find us on Amazon Live, you can go to our Amazon storefront at amazon.com slash shop slash long, long honeymoon. That's where our live stream will be broadcast at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time this Tuesday night. If you go there early, you can actually click the little follow button on that page, and then you'll get a notification when we go live. Hope to see you there. Thanks, guys. 
is the local, um, the name is escaping me. I don't know what you're talking about. The local community center. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting the name of it. 